<clears throat> there was a project that I conceived when I first started teaching the Tetra Seed, which was an experiment in what's called cultural retooling. We've got we've got a time here where lunatics have taken over the asylum. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like in a lot of ways they have they have all the control. And it doesn't look like there's a way to put control back in the hands of the caretakers. Mm -hmm. And the idea I had was an experiment to see whether or not people running these procedures could come together as a unit, as a group, and address larger cultural issues, troubles, mm -hmm. as a group, and sort those things out and then possibly intervene in ways unexpected or unrecognized. And the idea was to have a minimum of four people working on the same item at the same time as a group together mm -hmm. and then doing whatever they do individually apart and see what potential for change might emerge from that. Totally experimental. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a tetra seed think tank. This is a way of going beyond our personal concerns of our individual lives and dealing with much larger scope conditions with the intention of making a difference. Now, some people go into politics with that view, idealists. Mm -hmm. And there's a saying I've heard that uh, about the effects of being involved in something bigger than oneself. Now there's a good deal more horsepower involved dealing with large scale situations than there is in dealing with local personal matters. Sure. It demands a lot more of us, which means that it might be a lot more interesting. That may be the turning point that you've been confronted with. The bigger fish to fry. Mm -hmm. larger purpose provided you really resonate with that purpose I happened to you know and I, I was kind of groomed for that earlier in my life okay and I spent the next decades just grooming myself to be even capable of looking in that direction, that larger direction. So I've been behind the scenes for a long time. Mm -hmm. But when I read the news, as you hear me speak, I, I get a little fire in my belly going when I hear of the inmates having taken over the asylum. Yeah. That happens to be something that, for better or for worse, that it motivates me and I'm gearing up step by step possibly for a large intervention but I can't do it alone right so after this conversation you'll have heard me say this and it'll be something that may surface in you along with all the attendant possible doubts about undertaking something large. Mm -hmm. 
and that's where the procedures can again be of use right to deal, to deal with all the so we we just let that percolate and see whether or not really there's something that you observe about the times that really bugs you that you would want to take on to confront full head on mm -hmm. with the intention of succeeding right and if there is such a thing then that's possibly a direction that you could go that would extricate yourself from this kind of doldrums state okay <clears throat> and it's got to be authentic you know it's got to be something that you notice gets to you again and again right and you might have been sitting on it thinking there's nothing I can do or any other possible reason for feeling s stagnant that's where it gets interesting because then you can change the stagnation from something that's happening to you to a matter of choice Does that make any sense yes it does in my from my part in my history there was a point where I felt like somatics was too difficult a path not because the work was too difficult but because getting people to participate mm -hmm. was difficult back in the 90s I thought to myself I've got to quit this life of sin <laughs> meaning doing this obscure discipline however effective it is right and so I tried to quit and I started attending meetings of a state funded employment refitting organization I ended up teaching somatics to that group okay. there was no escape for me And so I just gave up the notion of escaping and just went back full bore into what I was doing and taking what came. Mm -hmm. Complete with all the anxieties of possible homelessness from lack of income and all the rest. That lasted for years to the point where I got fed up being anxious about it. Okay. I couldn't quit the life of sin. Instead, it's gone this direction. Everyone has their own life pattern to confront. So I tend I pose my statements more as questions for that reason. I don't know your your real situation. I just don't know it. You know it better than I and even you don't really know it there's all this mysterious aspect to it yeah but if you find that there's something that is niggling at you that is teasing your curiosity and your sense of being mildly intrigued knowing that there's something it could expand into that is beyond your current expectation Mm -hmm. that's an option this question of which do you prefer continuing as you are now or exploring the unknown right <coughs> got anything to come back with to what I've said Yeah, I'm going to be doing a bunch of middle way memory matrix on things. It could be interesting. Yeah. Could be more entertaining than doldrums. Sure. <laughs>